I'm Jessica Mannins, co-CEO and co-founder here at Game Studio Beyond. And uh, welcome to Beyond the Code, where I go behind the scenes with industry specialists to unearth their creative wisdom and learn about how to be our best in the world of creative development. And today I'm very excited to have our very first guest here, Richard Taylor, co-founder and creative director of Weta Workshop. Welcome, Richard. Lovely to see you, Jessica. Thank you so much. It is Monday morning here in Wellington, and I'm curious, what just happened at Weta Workshop before you came over to Beyond, to our studio? What's happening in the in the office? Just moments ago. Yes, tell I me. actually was doing a piece to camera to help promote a film that a New Zealand filmmaker is trying to get off the ground. Oh. And uh, so we we shot both him and myself in our photo studio against a large flat screen television with historical pictures on it and uh, so it required me writing a piece quickly this morning so I could help him out. Oh I love that mm. that's so cool and I love that That this is one of the things I wanted to showcase here was about goodness and about the things that go on behind the scenes both kind of creative, cre creatively but also um, you know the, the things that happen in terms of helping others and that's something I know that you've done a lot of over the years. Um, I myself have been involved I was just saying before in the neonatal charity work mm -hmm. that was many years ago um, and you know tell me about some of that like you've obviously been helping many people you mentor people you you know you're always supportive you've supported us as a business over the years what kind of drives that why do you do that well I think you've got to pass it on I'm very much of the view you don't want to keep things secret with respect to your technology and know-how and we actually share as broadly as we possibly can with other companies with uh, young people aspiring to do what we do for a living. I do believe it's a, uh, a necessity to demystify what we do in our business so much as kept secret and so much as uh, sensed as if you, you have to be an expert to be able to do it. And I don't agree with that. I actually think that anyone can give it a go. And it's important that young people aspiring to come into the industry don't actually feel uh, that it is inaccessible to them. And uh, the things that we do can be easily learnt. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, we hold internships for students and young people from around the world. Uh, we've got a new internship program starting post-COVID with China and the first group of students come into our workshop in the next couple of weeks, which is exciting. Uh, past students have gone back to their country of origin and set up arguably in competition to us. Um, uh, but I don't see it like that either. Uh, I see that what you're doing is you're hopefully uh, propagating other like-minded individuals to keep physical effects and design at the forefront of our creative minds and lives. And uh, in the case of a group that we uh, mentored who have become arguably one of the great effects workshops of China, we've just received a contract to deliver a very large um, uh, museum job. We couldn't do it unless we were partnering with them. And if we hadn't trained them, they wouldn't know how to do it. So yeah. it all comes around and goes around. Yeah. And, uh, you know, specifically my wife are patrons of the Neonatal Trust. Mm -hmm. And I know we've had crossover with that. I think we're in our 21st year. Uh, it's now called the Little Miracles Trust, mm -hmm. a very critical and important trust for New Zealand, mm -hmm. trying to keep uh, babies uh, healthy and their families um uh, solid and sound through that challenging phase of uh, childbirth when prem babies come into the world. Mm. So that that to us is a really wonderful uh, endeavour. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and I love that um, the work that you do in the space isn't just you know here's here's some money we're donating some money right. You you often put a lot of creativity and thought into the things that you do to support. Um, yeah, we we them. actually don't give money. Mm. Um, we give time. Mm. It's very, it's, well, it's not easy to give money. Of course, you've got to have the money to give, but uh, it's much harder to give time. So mm -hmm. we, we try and always give time. Uh, we, I, I was just doing a, a speech for the Mary Potter Hospice, one of the most wonderful charities in Wellington, and obviously a large number of us as people will ultimately end up in uh, that level of care at the end of our lives. Mary Potter Hospice is a critically important part of that. 
just recently, uh, the Women's Refuge Centre is another thing that I was invited to talk at. And to me, it's a very small amount of time for hopefully a very important uh, level of energy that you can pour into these things. So yeah. it, it's, uh, you know, and it, and it, it ultimately uh, means that you, you can uh, feel that uh, you as a group of people at Weta Workshop are trying to contribute to the the ecology mm. of New Zealand and Wellington's, uh, you know, uh, people that are trying to do good for us all. So. Yeah, mm. absolutely. It's fantastic. And I think that people part, you know, in our team, you know, that that's so important, right? Feeling like you're a part of something that is, you know, that's doing good, that, uh, you know, that values, you know, our community that we're in. And, you know, tell me about your team and, and about the Weta Workshop team. What are, what are they like? And, and, and why, do, why do they want to work with, you know, with Weta and you and your team? And Well, we have 380 about? people at the moment across six different businesses, uh, so a very, very uh, different group of people. Some are manufacturers on the workshop floor doing craft-based skills. Others are game makers. Uh, people are making collectibles, operating tourism offerings. Uh, obviously, we have our management infrastructure and we have uh, all of the team that actually gets uh, into the thick of it every day. So it's a very unique and wonderful group of people. I... I very much believe that you're looking for people that are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, you know, uh, people that are passionate, enthusiastic, and tenacious. Yeah. Uh, maybe before uh, talent even comes into the picture, uh, if you can find people with those three attributes, then they're probably going to go on the journey with you. Yeah. And what we do requires an intense level of focus and dedication. Uh, if you, you, there's a binary choice, you either commit to a project or you don't, it's that simple. But if you do commit to it, you're never setting the rules. The, uh, the client sets the rules. You're only as good as the, uh, the client's ability to manage their own job through your facility. So uh, we obviously do everything we can to help the client uh, take um, care around how we get the work done. But it is a reality that uh, if they want to speed the deadline up or uh, demand more things in the time that we've got, etc., it's it's our role to try and bend to that request. Mm -hmm. So our team have to be uh, flexible. I call it the soft ball of clay of working. You have to be able to absorb the hit from the side and not, if you're a hard block of wood, you get knocked off your trajectory but if you're a soft ball of clay you can absorb yeah. that level of impact and just carry on uh reaching your goals never pursue the destination the destination is somewhere way over the hills and i don't actually have any desire to find the destination i don't even think that the completion of a movie or a major project is our destination. I just see it as stages along the trip that we're having together. Yeah. And uh, I like that essence. I like the fact that uh, as a group of people, we're on this rolling, uh, explorative journey together, um, growing in our capabilities, exploring our creativity, and uh, doing it as a collaborative group together to reach the goals that we're we're pursuing. Mm, I love that. And it's so that that passion, um, you know, I completely agree here at Beyond, you know, often don't worry about qualifications or experience. If someone really wants to work here and with us and they believe in what we're doing and the projects we're working on, and they're the right people, you know, they're yep. the ones that will come with you on the ride because it's up and down, right? It's not, you know, as you say, and it's a ride. It's not, you know, you, you've got a big journey to get to places. Yeah, there, there are a very small number of jobs within our facility that requires a qualification and actually, I've never looked at people's qualifications mm -hmm. when I interview them. I'm much more interested in the individual that yeah. they are and their ability to uh, place that into the work environment. You know, I, I, to me, as corny as it is, but hopefully you will get this, it all just comes down to love, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I put it down to four forms of that. It's the love of who you are. Like you, you've got to have love in yourself and mm -hmm. your self-belief that you're worthy of this credible career. Um, love of the people that you work with, uh, love of what you do, love of what you make, basically, mm -hmm. and love of who you do it for. 
Yeah. If you miss any one of those four components, you are going to in some way be um, cynical about things. You're going to lack that un, un, um, unadulterated love of actually just getting it mm. done. And so I, I hope that uh, what people can find within our work environment is that sense of, uh, you know, loving themselves, loving what they do, loving the people they work with and loving who they make it for. You've oh, got to love your audience yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Four loves. Yeah. Um, all right. And so tell me about some of this creative work. We're going to, what I'm keen to do is just understand a little bit about that process that goes on behind the scenes. So, um, you know, you've been building all sorts of virtual worlds in many different ways. Have you said you've got, you know, you've got your prop making, you've got, you know, you've got your collectibles, you've got your gaming. Tell me a little bit about that, that starting process, you know, what happens what happens in down the road you know when um a new project comes along um and you're like right we're going to start somewhere well we we are very fortunate in that predominantly we're drawing on traditional hand skill creativity uh we use tools in the workshop that can be tracked back to the hieroglyphs of the egyptian empire but we're also innovating new methodologies. And the way that we've managed to stay in business, specifically in our manufacturing division, is through uh, the innovation of new methodologies. About 60% of everything we make today is in some way assisted through robotic manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And whether that be 3D printing, laser cutting, plasma cutting, water jet cutting, milling, uh, et cetera, uh, and a large proportion of those robots that assist us have been built by people within the workshop. So not only innovating the methodology, innovating the machines mm -hmm. to innovate the methodology. So robot building robots to build robots, yeah. which is pretty cool. That's awesome. And, uh, and we are literally now, we've got a robotics division where we're building uh, high performance capable humanoid robots wow. so uh, can they do massages because my uh, son keeps asking me if he can have a massage robot yeah that would be a great <laughs> we've actually just finished a museum in china celebrating the traditional chinese herbal medicine oh, awesome. you enter the museum by uh, journeying down into the bowels of the earth to explore the mythology and the foundation of tcm uh, medicine but then you ascend to the heavens and pass through the five floors of the museum. But you actually exit on the deck of a uh, spaceship traveling across the universe, harvesting uh, intergalactic TCM um, <laughs> uh, vegetables and fruit. Love and it. in that spaceship, we actually have robots massaging <laughs> the um, the uh, the alien space people that are that are um, that are driving the ship across the the universe. So oh, yeah, fun. why not? Why not? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's so cool. And is that just launched? Is that just? Uh, no, we've just finished just it. Finished. There's been six years of work. Wow. And in that case, we. This is through our location-based experience division, uh, best known for the work on the Gallipoli exhibition yeah. in town. Oh, amazing. But uh, we do a very diverse body of work through that. We've just done the world's largest duty-free shopping mall on uh, Hainan Island in the city of Haiku. And that's wow. a, that was a brief create the coolest room in the world. So that's a deeply immersive, crazy, um, large-scale immersive environment. Uh, but the the museum in Zhuhai we built for the Macau government and uh, collaborating with an amazing group of Chinese companies and our partners Shambhala. And in that case, that just started as a whiteboard drawing yeah. in our office in Wellington and now is a uh, 37,000 square metre building sitting in Zhuhai. So wow. very strange yeah. uh, how these things come to be. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I'm, some of the projects we've worked on, you know, this I look back and we've kept some of the pieces of paper. We just started the little scribbles, the yeah. drawings yeah. of the worlds that you're going to create. And, and I think it often does, right? It starts on a piece of paper or, you know, a whiteboard and then it becomes these huge things. It's pretty amazing what you can create. Yeah, I, d well, I don't think any idea really starts at volume. Yeah. You actually <laughs> always start with the seed of 
an idea yeah. and then try and grow it from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So tell me, yeah, a little bit more about that. So the robots, robots. unleashed and, you know, because I've been to Unleashed. It's yeah. amazing. It's Great. so much. Fun. Thank you very much. Incredible. Yeah, hopefully your listeners will think to go to Unleashed in yeah. Federal Street in Auckland. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, for that experience, I wanted really badly to, ha- to build a robot yeah. uh, because it's something, having had a career building animatronics at Weta Workshop, but animatronics for feature films are a are a discipline where you can nip in between takes and fix things and but a a long life uh animatronic robot for a themed entertainment experience has to run day in day out with no maintenance and uh or little maintenance and stays <laughs> going all the time so we decided to challenge ourselves and we built Jeff uh Jeff's a animatronic from Hamilton <laughs> and our health and safety officer and receptionist who tells really bad dad jokes he's great and yeah we wanted to see if we could create a performance robot that actually engages with people and gives people a laugh and that's given us the confidence. Jeff has now been running for over three years mm-hmm. uh, every day with minimal maintenance. And uh, uh-huh. we have now gone on and developed uh, Jeff 2.0 and uh, are developing an AI component for Jeff, uh, the new Jeff. Much more complex facial performance, much more complex uh, body and hand and arm performance. And... Uh, Off the back of Jeff 2.0, we've actually refined our design now and are creating a very, um, a a very sophisticated, I guess, pipeline to try and be able to produce robots for the themed industry. And hopefully we can now go out and start trying to find work in that area. That's so cool. Always innovating. I love that about what you do. Yeah. Great fun. Yeah. And so much fun. And I love that you've got this vision and, um, and then can, you know, bring it to life. And I think that's, that's a big, that's a part of entrepreneurship, right? And, and I don't know if we're talking about that and thinking about some of the people that might be watching or listening to this, you know, what, what would you say to those, you know, particularly young people, you know, you're doing a lot of mentorship for those that have an idea, you know, that have a vision of something exciting that they want to see. How what would you recommend? What would be your advice? Well, I I have always been of the view that uh unabashed enthusiasm and self-belief has to come first. Uh you know, uh, Douglas Adams wrote uh that the art of um flying is to throw yourself at the ground and miss, right? And a long time ago, I adapted that to um, the art of innovation mm. is to throw yourself at failure and miss. We have hit failure firmly in the face many, many times. And it would be somewhat easier to just relegate yourself back into the shadows and realize that uh, or just accept that the failures are trying to tell you something and you shouldn't be so quite as bold and quite as... Uh, as um, trying to forge forward, but I, I don't, I don't see it like that. I see that each fail uh, is a way to learn and grow and um, acknowledge. You have to acknowledge the failures so that you actually experience a better way forward, mm-hmm. and then just getting up and going at it again. Mm-hmm. And uh, we all have the ability to pour our enthusiasm into something. And if if it is an idea that you um, truly believe in, then it is deserving of of trying to get it into the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just spent Saturday uh, socialising with one of uh, New Zealand's great entrepreneurs, uh, creatives in the form of uh, Rod Jury and his uh, friend Atlanta, and they brought 16 of their colleagues to come and see us and these 16 people are all in a startup phase in their business and it was so astounding to me to hear the diversity of what they're all tackling and and where they found a a gap in the market and something that's missing in the world that can be developed to help uh people and help the world and uh help uh the planet as a whole and uh just as everyone spoke around the table, it was so uplifting to hear this group of people share their stories and uh, and how they have found in them the self-belief and the drive and the commitment to see their idea fly. And I, I really 
you know, every every future is waiting for you to write yourself into it. And uh, up until the point that you leave home, of course, your loved ones, your parents, your siblings are helping write you into that future. But at some point, you break free. And really, there is no one other than yourself and your close friends and colleagues that can uh, write that future for you. So um, the best thing is just to get writing. Yeah. Yeah. Just do it and, and realise that failure is part of it. We're all going to um, try and fly and fall and uh, hurt our heads a little bit. I certainly have. We have here at Beyond, the ups and downs, you know, launching, you know, a location-based game in LA just before COVID hit and, you know, <laughs> yep. thinking we'd nailed it. <laughs> and then, of course, boom, the whole whole industry over for, for a certain amount of time. Yeah, same um, with Unleash. We opened Unleash yeah. just before COVID, never imagining that the worldwide <laughs> pandemic was yeah. going to knock our aspirations. Yeah. But everyone rallies together, yeah. keeps, keeps the faith. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think that's a very important part of it is, Keeping the faith in the original aspiration, the original dream, and uh, and uh, also though being being aware enough and mature enough to know when it's time to bail as yeah, well. Absolutely, uh, you've got to know when to stop. Yeah, if it's not, if you know, you've got to keep trying, but eventually, sometimes you've got sometimes to change, change and move. Change trajectory. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, you're just going to plow your money and your energy, yeah. and most critically, uh, your colleagues and friends' energy, mm. your, your team's energy, into something that is is evidently not going to actually bear fruit. Yeah. And that inflection point and the ability to judge that, because mm. I I myself get very blinded by the the drive to do something, and um, it, it's... I find it very hard to identify when to bail out of something. Right. My wife, Tanya, is much better at it than I am. <laughs> Does she stop you a few times? Yeah, a few times, yeah. yeah. She, well, she just rationalizes yeah. things maybe a bit more in a black and white mentality. But uh, I sort of, you know, look through rose-colored spectacles and sort of get into it so so passionately that sometimes it's hard to arrest it when it's not going as well as it needs to go. But I think that's why it's a perfect kind of um, – you know, a partnership really, isn't it? Because you need to have like that, that rose colored, you know, driving passion and love that you talked about so that you can keep pushing through and then to also have someone who can go, okay, you know, I'm going to come back with a bit of logic here or maybe look at the numbers or whatever it is. And, you know, and that, you know, I think that collaboration, those partnerships, those co-founders, those people that, you know, your team, it's so important to have that diverse, you know, thinking and, you know, it, it is. You know, I, if I give a talk at Polytech or at university, I will propose to the, to the students that no individual, um, uh, it, it's more likely that as individuals, through the collaboration of the people in possibly sitting right next to you in that college chair or in that university lecture hall, that you will achieve your goals. Mm. Uh, it's one thing, many things are achieved by a single individual, no doubt. But if you can find collaborators yeah. that bring their superpowers that you don't possess, totally. and our our success uh, for the success that you could argue that we've had and the, and the lack of success uh, at times, but our success has been through a collegiate uh, collaboration with an amazing group of people. Our general manager, Dave Wilkes, our um, senior leadership team, our senior creatives that are around us, we are uh, venturing into a whole nother area of uh, of creative endeavor right now in a new division um, that we've set up where we're working uh, in emerging technologies and the metaverse and a uh, very exciting area. And that has been possible because a, a person that has come with me through our company for the last 10 years has, has a desire and endeavor to do that and in the form of an individual called Sam Gao, supported by uh, people like our senior creative, Rick Athorn and Grant Bensley, head of business, We've been able to forge this new endeavor and uh, doing things that two years ago we could never have imagined that yeah. we would have 
taken on, but uh, new new people join us that are coming out of tertiary educations that have no interest in doing handcraft uh, uh, skill-based construction jobs, um, the sort of stuff that's the stable of our company. But we still would love to give them the opportunities that Weta Workshop can offer. So in some cases, that requires actually building something entirely new mm -hmm. so that we can benefit from their superpowers. Yeah. The digital natives that are coming out of universities today that are so clever, are so astoundingly mm -hmm. clever, but you have to find the opportunity mm -hmm. for them to pour their creativity into. Yeah, absolutely. And tell me, I'm curious. So we've got this new department. Obviously, I'm, I'm guessing this is a department that you worked with Neil Stevenson on, on the snow crash um, sword. Well, and Neil Stevenson has inspired Neil's writings, yeah. uh, of course, with yeah. uh, the snow crash book. And, and Neil's just philosophical approach to life mm. all forms a a density of uh, aspiration and education and, and to some degree knowledge that gives you the sense that you can tackle something like this. Yeah. And very specifically with, with respect to the sword that you're mentioning, we've been thinking about a term that, uh, that Rick Athorn, one of our senior creatives came up with a three or four years ago, which is masterworks for the metaverse, right? If you think about what the potential of the metaverse is and where it may take us, and then you think about the world that we live in today, whether it be the Venus de Milo, Tutankhamun's tomb, uh, a beautiful piece of architecture, a beautiful uh, costume, uh, hokuture, fashion, et cetera, et cetera, the, the literature, the ballet, the opera of our world, these are masterworks that the craftspeople and artisans of the last multi-thousand years have left. In many ways, they're totems that designate a specific country's culture through history. It would be a great shame if the metaverse that is being mobilized for future generations' um, interest and involvement lacks that sense of masterwork uh, um, uh, totems through it. So in a very um, initial and I guess uh, explorative way, we decided to try and make the first masterwork uh, where we would create a digital and physical twin. Mm. And uh, we ultimately made a sword from the world of Snow Crash that hero protagonist uh, uh, could have um, arguably wielded and uh, Produce this beautiful uh, Japanese sword that it looked then, amazing. Yeah, I saw the renders. They yeah, just great, great, and presented in this crazy geometric puzzle box. And uh, then we also had a digital replica made by this amazing digital artist, Michael, who's actually a Kiwi, but working in Europe at the moment. He may have well oh, worked yes, for I you know. guys. Yes, we've done some work with Michael. Yeah, he's yeah. brilliant. Astounding. Yeah. I think astounding. he's going to come home. I think yeah, he might I think come he back. Is. We're hoping he yeah. is. Yeah. So anyway, the idea being that um, you can have the physical masterwork in your loft apartment in New York or whoever ultimately bought it. Do you know? And no, 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 we don't no. know. Oh, Very it exciting. On yeah, it was auctioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that means it was the first time we've ever auctioned anything like that. Talk about um, anxiety. Was it yeah, I know, I think I had some messages with Michael. He was very nervous. Yeah, oh, <laughs> gosh, wasn't he just? Uh, we all were, but we'd committed so much money to it because we wanted to make it the best sword that mm. we've ever made. We spent a year working on it. Um, uh, Chris Menges, our, one of our sword makers, built it, Lance uh, Hansen looked after the box, and huge number of people contributed to this. And so to have a digital um, metaverse uh, 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 masterwork and then a physical masterwork. So that was a beautiful thing to do. And it coincided with Neil Stevenson auctioning off some rare uh, uh, snow crash um, uh, other things like a script and some original right. artwork and yeah. so on. So the, the coolest thing out of that whole endeavor 
was the weekly meeting with Neil. Oh, yes. Because right? uh, we, we love to interact with Neil, and he's an amazing human being, as, as is the people that work with him, mm. specifically Karen, his colleague. But um, to meet weekly on a structured meeting to discuss what we're doing and how we're doing it and yeah. share with him where we're at and... Oh, just amazing. Yeah. So we're very, we're, in fact, do you know, we're, as I, I'm 58 now, and as I sort of journey into the later part of my career and I reflect on the, the highs of this career, I, I can see firmly that the best thing that's come out of it is the opportunity to interact with people that you could never have imagined when you were a kid growing up in New Zealand that you could have ever have crossed paths with. And uh, I'm sure it's the same yeah, with you. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. that that's made for a very, very special uh, journey for yeah. sure. I bet. Yeah, I feel very grateful and lucky to be, you know, to have grown up here in Wellington. You know, I, I hosted Neil um, a few years back at Creative Realities. He did a, you know, a conversation with Greg Broadmoor, another one of um, our very talented creatives yeah, no here doubt. in New Zealand that you work with. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, we just, we learn so much from being surrounded by these people. I mean, I, I always try and surround myself by people who are smarter than me and more creative than me. And then I feel like that's Indeed. the way to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel <laughs> like an infant around <laughs> some of the people that work with us yeah. and you know I consider I'm a relatively capable person but oh, just a little bit I mean like. <laughs> some of the some of the the skills and knowledge and uh, abilities is just yeah. astounding I mean so. I'm always just blown away by you know what our team do here and you know in engine you know I watch them with coding you know with, you know the the language that they've had to learn which to me is just so complicated I'm not yeah. one with the math brain no, so for no, me, me it's neither. like that just blows my mind and then our artists you know you know I see them sketch and then it becomes a 3D world and it just I just think oh I just could, I can't even imagine how you do no, that. Our game, our game shop team just boggle my mind. Yeah. You know, we've got people working with us that can code, and their their streams of numbers are pouring down the screen. And X number of weeks later, mm. it turns into something exquisite, mm. beautiful functionality, isn't it? It's just yeah. it's, it's magical, just isn't it? magical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I feel lucky that we've got. And an, an infrastructure that allows that type of people to yeah. be around us. Yeah, yeah, I love it too. All right, well, um, I think that might be the end of our time with you, Richard. I have loved it. I would could have talked to you for way longer, so we might have to have you back to talk about more. But um, cool. thank you for being such an amazing part of the industry here, for you know nurturing young talent, for you know so just being so supportive. It really is appreciated. It really means a lot to studios like ours, you know, to so many people. And so, um, no, thank oh, you. Thank we you really very much. It. Thank you, and yeah. it's lovely to come and chat with you. Yeah. All right, that's all from Beyond the Code. We'll see you next time with another fantastic guest.